Okay. Welcome to World Hi. Extermination Radio. I'm uh I'm 40 ounce and I'm here today with NX Gangrel. It's actually my my name is still officially Gangrel R E L, but oh, okay. um, for the sake of Doom World I switched it. Actually the reason why I got that name is because an acquaintance of mine, um, who I hate now because she's a bitch. Um <laughs> Oh no. Uh she she called uh, she saw my username and she said it was stupid and she said it sounded like gang girl and I'm like well I'll change it to that one <laughs> yeah we haven't exactly had the best history of each other but you know is she I'm someone on Doomwall too um no I don't think yeah probably not um, oh okay we we were just friends for the time being and then things got sour oh but, I'm sorry uh, to hear that yeah I decided to change my name when when we got a new uh or when Doom World kind of changed up a little bit, I decided to change my name to something stupid, and then I'm gonna change it back. That's okay. When I um, but, when I first got into Doom World for the first time, my name was Johnny Rancid, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is nothing like what it is now. But um, I uh, the reason I did that is because I I um I I got into Skull Tag and I signed up to that forum and I wanted to and my my name on Skull Tag was uh Forty Ounce Casualty, which is named after uh. uh this uh, song by a band called The Casualties, and uh, I was I was like I was really into like punk rock at the time, and I, I still kind of am, but I, I I go back and forth between I'm, I'm more of a metalhead now. But um, oh, no. anyway, I um I, I signed up to Doom World at one point, and like I forgot my password or something like that, so <laughs> I just I, I like had an account for like almost a year, and didn't know how to post, and then I eventually got into Skull Tag and I used a different name, and then um, I wanted to have both the names match. So I just I just shortened it down to 40 ounce. It was just like one quick thing. Oh, nice. Yeah. I had countless Z Demon um, accounts that I've lost. I've gone through at least, mm, well, for Doom, at least three names. Um, I, <laughs> I'm sticking with this one now, but I've changed yeah. a, a lot of my names for <laughs> some reason. I used to deathmatch as uh, Megalon. Uh, and then eventually when I got my Steam account, it was my email name, Trommel, and then I kept changing it every now and then. And on Steam, I'll still change my name, like my gaming buddies, uh, too specifically. We, we always change the name to something stupid. Like, um, I can't I can't remember what show it was. It was like this um, show on Adult Swim that was like making fun of cartoons like He-Man and whatnot. And there's this oh, character okay. called X, X the Eliminator. And so one of them was X, I'm Y, and then the other one was Z the Eliminator. And <laughs> I wasn't there to actually watch it, but those two and another of their friends all had the same type of name, X the Eliminator. And they were threatened to get kicked out of a Gary's Mod server because it got, it got too confusing. <laughs> That's funny. And, okay, and now they changed their name into one of... I guess they're doing the Ed Ed and Eddie thing for some reason because now they're Ed Ed and Eddie characters, so whatever. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so um, I know you're like relatively new to Doom World, as far as I know. Like you've had an account for I guess like a year now. Um, yeah, I've been here for about two years. Oh, okay. So you you've been playing Doom but for quite a while now. I have been playing Doom since I was nine years old. My I played a lot of Unreal Tournament and unreal and deus ex and things like that and my dad thought one day it would be funny for me to play doom so he got me the shareware version on my uh windows xp actually i think he built he had to build a new computer it wasn't necessarily new it was like a it was like a frankenstein's monster of a computer because <laughs> it was like a windows 2000 or an xp that he just sort of rebuilt mm. and all i could run was doom on it and so I played that, and I played it on I'm Too Young to Die, and I remember just being absolutely terrified of the game. I would get nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I tried to convince him to get me the actual game, like the full version of the game, and he said he would if I beat all the levels, so my nine-year-old mind decided it would be a good idea to cheat just to make it quicker. <laughs> and so I eventually finished <laughs> episode one, if you will, 
and I'm uh, and I'm begging him to, to get me the full game. He's like, fine, fine, I'll do that. And then eventually he discovered Z Doom, and uh, I got Doom Two, Doom TNT, and uh, Plutonia. Cool. Yeah, that was um my my first experience playing Doom. I was I was way young. I was like three years old, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, I used all the cheat codes too. So nice. so like I, I had like I had kind of like. A compromised experience because I played through all of Doom using cheat codes, like before I even knew how much mon- like damage the monsters did. Because at the time I was so young, I was like terrified of seeing like the Doom guy's face bleed and die. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So I was like, yeah, I gotta what, play with cheat codes. What's interesting though is that the first time I, I, I can't I can't ever find it again. But the first like version of Doom that I had, it had a really weird sound, like. Doom Guy's death scream was kind of like a subtle, almost faint kind of moan when he dies. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Hmm. The the whenever a, like an imp or a bear in a hell would like basically do their clawing attack, you'd hear like Doom Guy yell "What?" or something like that. Oh, really? And the zombie, yeah. And the zombies made this weird. It's like they actually spoke English, but you couldn't really understand what they're saying, kind of like in Doom 3, but it was like this mumble, like they're trying to say something to you, and I, and I don't even remember what the pinkies made, but those, yeah, I, I, when I was about, the first time I played it, I could never get past E1M4, because that little tunnel area where you first see the pinkies, I was so scared of them that I just would never enter, I I was (laughs) never level. That's funny. There was um. So like, do you, do you think that was like a sound mod that you played with it? Because I know in like, there's no, a lot. No, it was of... just a regular, just a regular wad. Oh really? Huh. Yeah. And it was. What's interesting though is that I remember I found the file again a while ago. This was at least 2012, maybe. Oh nice. And I played it. I played it over Doom Two, and yeah, it was really weird. But the monsters that the or the sounds that were affected were still uh were, were still affected from like for the surf monsters and the the doom guy but everything else was sort of fine except for the sky was always uh the one from uh uh, uh knee deep in the dead oh okay yeah i know and like there's like a lot of 1994 like deathmatch wads and stuff and they have all sorts of like sound replacements and they're usually like uh recordings from like movies and stuff so like you'll hear like yeah. so like when you pick up a weapon it'll it, like it'll be like Arnold Schwarzenegger saying I'll be back or something like that. Yeah. All kinds of ridiculous. I, hate stuff. Those. I know they're they're really awful. <laughs> I don't know why anybody thought they were good. <laughs> well, technically, my first Doom experience was actually it was a map in Unreal Tournament. It was a very small capture the flag map, which was basically the red base was E one M one and the blue base was map one from Doom two. And basically, the exit elevator uh, from E1M1 led to the beginning of uh, Map 1, and they sort of collided, except um, the little outdoor area that Map 1 had had lava in it, and instead of poison uh, in E1M1, it was uh, regular water you could swim under. It was a very small map, and it had, a, it had like an MP3 version of the E1M1 uh, track. That's pretty cool. What um you uh you said you were like into like Unreal and stuff before you got into Doom, right? Yes, Unreal Tournament was the first video game, not the first video game, the first FPS game I've ever played. Uh, the first time I actually played the game, I was seven, so that was in two thousand seven. Mm. But um, my dad tried to get me to play it from when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. I would always so, is, is your dad into I video always... games and stuff? Pardon? Is your dad into video games and stuff? Yes, he's actually playing Age of Conan right now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> he plays um, pretty much what he does for the past three years is that he goes to work in the mornings and he comes back at, like, 5 and he plays Age of Conan until, like, 2 a.m. and then go, goes to sleep and goes to work. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he used to be in uh, older games, which is why I like playing older games so much that and my computer just can't really run anything. <laughs> no. mm. um, he... he the three games that he would always play was Unreal Tournament, Street Fighter, and Civilization Three, and I would always sit next to him on uh, his right, yeah, his right side on a little wooden chair, 
I, I'd grab the chair from the table, I'd sit next to him, and I'd watch him play some of these games. And if he would play Street Fighter, or Stu- Super Street Fighter 2, sometimes I would get up just a few feet away from him, and I'd mimic the moves of the characters, what was going on, of the character that he was playing. I Unless it was Ken Ryu, then I would mimic them. <laughs> yeah, I used to, um, and, uh, I used to play a lot of, uh, okay. I used to play a lot of Streets of Rage. And, like, the guys can do, like, uppercuts, and they can do suplexes and all kinds of stuff. And I would I would have, like, when I was a little kid, I had, like, stuffed animals and stuff, and I would, like, throw them on the ground and, like, beat them up and stuff. And I always felt like I was really cool. What I thought, which, looking back, it's kind of really stupid, but what I would do is I'd take my action figures, and I'd place them around certain... I'd, I'd take the ones that, I in my head, looked like the Street Fighter characters, even though they weren't. Like, I'd use, like... Blanca, or I'd use like the Hulk for Blanca, or Dal- <laughs> uh, Dalton would be Spider Man, and I would put, I would lay them around parts of the house that vaguely looked like the levels of Super Street Fighter Two, and then I take one action figure, go around beating them up, pretending I'm playing Street Fighter, and then I go on to the next <laughs> quote unquote next map. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I would build i would build out of the big legos uh the weapons from deus x and unreal tournament i was kind of messed up as a kid because i always i always liked drawing the guns and weapons and stuff like that of unreal tournament and deus x and uh, it was it, it's kind of embarrassing to think about it now but you know no I don't was, be embarrassed i, like I mean i did six. stuff like that too i mean we're, we were all kids at one point in our life i mean i've, I've done all kinds of stuff I mean, like that i mean i'm still a kid but you know, yeah not that not that little kid. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, um, I, I especially played with a lot of Legos, and I think that kind of, like, introduced... I think that was, like, part of why I wanted to get into mapping, because I loved, like, building buildings and, like, cities and all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, it was really exciting when I found out about uh, Doom mapping for the first time, because I could, like, actually create the, uh, like, the stuff from scratch and not, like, actually run out of Legos yeah. and be able to use as many of one color as I want. Because, like, all my buildings yeah, exactly. were all just these random jumbled up colors because I just had, like, these, these like, mixed bags of, every like, every color of the rainbow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I my, the first time I was interested in mapping, I was at least five. I, I would draw, like, granted they were terrible and very small and very primitive top-down levels of what I imagined would be Unreal Tournament levels. And uh, I'd, I'd, you know, put, like, arrows where the teleport teleports go where certain weapons went where the flag went and all that even though it was like really small and that 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 started sort of my interest i don't i don't know how i started getting interested in level design exactly but i remember one of the first that was one of the first things i did and i always wanted to take a look at the unreal uh, editor and, and try to build something but even now i can't figure it out but that's mostly because my unreal editor is just flat out broken. It doesn't work <laughs> anymore. So I discovered uh, Doom Builder. Yeah, I was Doom Builder. I think I was about ten. That was after my dad got Z Doom because I had I could either play SNES Doom Doom One on my emulator on my PC, or I would play Doom Two on our television computer it was the it was just regular television but we could have its own like oh the commute the computer connected to the tv uh the only problem with that is he was like playing z doom the only problem with that was that only the music worked for sound everything else was just sort of blank and i don't know what the i don't know what, what was <laughs> wrong with it but eventually my dad got z doom by the time i was 10 and i looked i don't know if it was he or i that found out about doom builder and I started trying to make maps, and I had no idea how it worked. And, um, yeah, I basically quit doing that for about a year, and then I came back to it in 2012, and I started looking up Doom Builder tutorials and Doom, just how to make a, a Doom map, basically. And yeah. I started doing that, and granted, they sucked, but, like, like they were, <laughs> they were, like, legitimately bad because I didn't know how to use the arrow keys or anything like that at the time. <laughs> so I, I would just make like these small levels in this like box that all I could use. Yeah. And I had no idea tags worked and blah, blah, blah. But eventually I figured it out and I started, I started actually making levels by the time I was, uh, 13, 
Uh, 13 going. But uh, I came to Doom World in 2000. I mean, I, ca I sort of lurked since I was about 13 or 14, but um, I didn't really join until 2015 when I was really confident. Con more yeah. or less confident in my mapping abilities because that's pretty much the main reason why I joined. I didn't really care about, you know, talking about things or anything like that. I just <laughs> wanted to map to be part of community projects, basically. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm glad I didn't release any of my older stuff, even though I I have released one map set um, when I, that I made between ages 13 and 14, and they were bad, but that's mostly because, uh, one, other than the fact that I was inexperienced, I, I moved them unsuccessfully from Doom 1 to Doom 2. I don't know why. But yeah, I think I remember those. Are those the uh, maps that are like kind of almost kind of quaky in a way? They're like kind of uh, really brown nope. and tan. Nope. Yeah, nope. I, I like was, those maps. Uh, I made that after because I got not not people telling me they sucked, but they pretty much sucked, and people were telling me sort of the problems that that, that uh, they had in levels. And so about two months after that, that's when I released a wad. Uh, which is basically what you just described. Mm. It was supposed to be like Egawad. I was going to work on it, but eventually my computer, my laptop broke, so I had to get a new one. So oh. I had to redo everything. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, thankfully it was only six maps and the levels I'm working on right now in replacement for those are much, much, much better. Yeah, I was going to say, I played um, I, I played a little bit of... Um... Doom 2 Redux, the one that that community yeah. project that Tracer started, and um, what's the, funny? Uh, oh, go ahead. The, the maps you've made in it, like, are I, well, you've really carried the project because you you've made most of the maps and they're really good. I liked them a lot. Yeah, I'm the uh, I'm the manager of that. If you haven't noticed, oh, <laughs> I don't know why Trace picked me of all people, but you know, I, I guess he knew I could do the job because I'm on Doom World 24 seven. <laughs> and, yeah, me too. But uh, actually, the, those the the map sets that I made 2013, 14 was uh, was actually its own Doom Doom One Redux project because I didn't I didn't know how to change the the, uh, the level names and I really wanted to do that and so I couldn't since I didn't know how to figure it out basically what I did is I I made levels based off the names in a very cheesy way ah. and I made maybe five six five or six maps for episode one. And then I remember I did the same thing for Doom 2 and I made a suburbs map and um, a, a downtown map. Cool. But uh, eventually um, my Windows 7 computer started, uh, like the entire thing was like slowing down. So like, not, not only just the actual monitor, but like loading it, I, you could tell how slow it was. Yeah, so I know what you mean. Like, be, computers will, like, deteriorate after a while. I don't know what it is. I guess, like, I don't know. I'm not really sure what it is, but I've, I've had that experience, like, almost every computer I've had. It's just, like, after yeah. a couple of years, it just starts to suck. And I'm not really sure why. <laughs> it just does. Yeah, it was really bad, and I got really frustrated. So we had to reinstall Windows 7 again, and uh, so those are gone now. Mm-hmm. Well, when we, when I first met you, you um you sent me a private message around the time I was starting uh Mutiny that that community yeah. project, and um I know like we we talked about working on a map together and we and we kind of got started on it but we never really finished it and I'm really sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it was my fault. I'll, I'll start with at first I thought you were planning on doing a collaboration like you was it Super I mean Jamie Super. Yeah, yeah Super the, Jamie. Yeah. The guy you worked with for USC Ultra. I, yeah. That's what I was. That's what I thought we were gonna do, just us two. But I wasn't very sure about that because you know you knew how to make maps like well, and I didn't. So, and then I saw like the mutiny community project thread, and I'm like, okay, I, I guess I can get behind this. And um, I, I what I took about I made about I worked on five five or so maps. Maybe six, yeah, six. Um, but the problem with that was that I was making the levels, and everyone who I was supposed to work with basically didn't didn't work on it. Yeah. Um, Fawn's 
like I, I sent a level to Fonz and he edited a little bit and then after that he was basically like wanted me to finish the rest of it and I'm like I didn't know what to do with it so I didn't do anything with it <laughs> and then I worked on a level with or I was supposed to work on a level with was it Cyphista 42 yeah and he didn't touch it he actually asked me if we wanted to collaborate I'm like sure and he didn't touch the level and then I worked on one with Trace which is basically I made one half of the level he made the other half I pieced it together and then we didn't finish it I think it was Pinchy who had a who had a who had to work on it but I don't think um it turned out very well and then that got scrapped and I know we worked on at least two levels like we had to redo the other one and yeah. I got by that point I got busy with doing two redux because and even that I had levels that I worked on but didn't finish yeah I was, I was almost gonna that was almost gonna be map fifteen for that project, but and then you stepped in. And you're like, I'm gonna submit a map. I'm like, I can, I can work with this. So, yeah, I was. Um, but yeah, I, I, think I, I was trying to avoid. Stuff, so this was mostly my fault. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's no, it's it's really not your. It's not really not. I mean, it's I don't I don't take it personally or anything. I wasn't upset about it. I was trying to when I started that project. I I wanted to avoid doing any of the mapping myself. I was hoping that the community would carry it like on themselves. But um, yeah. I did end up having to like get my like stick my finger in pretty much every map. Well, not every map, but like at least a pretty good handful of them. And um, yeah, that's. I was kind of surprised when I saw a few levels that were just one person. I think that was DT and you who made at least one map that was just you. Yeah, well, I was also surprised it was it was hard to get a lot of people into it. And I guess it, I I think it has something to do with the um, the time of the year that I started the project. I think a lot of people were like they had their own like real life obligations. So there was just, I guess people were like at yeah. school or at their jobs and all kinds of stuff. So it was hard to get people motivated that well, people that were like, I don't know, but um, it was, it, it did attract a lot of, um, a lot of pretty interesting people, but it was hard to get uh, a lot of these people to stay committed to their maps. I think they like made like a couple short parts and then they're like, all right, someone else will take this. And it just never yeah. happened. Nobody wanted to like finish other people's maps. They just wanted to start their own. <laughs> yeah. And that's just kind of, but um, it still came out to a pretty cool project, and it was fun working on it. Oh, nice. Uh, I liked a lot of the maps. Um, I didn't. I didn't really see any complaints there. I thought it was a pretty good uh, map set. The only thing, I, I'm I'm glad I did get some of the textures that I made in there, even though I think they're really bad. Uh, there, there's one texture in particular that was a door that I made that uses the silver texture, and I realized, like, after the wad was finished, that the, like, little... It was, there's supposed to be, like, a key, a fake keypad on the door. Yeah. It was a little bit high, and I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> well, can't fix this now. So, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I liked a lot of the textures that you made, and um, some a lot, of, a lot of the other people did, too. Um, especially... Um, Pevera and Jay Mickle, when they made the compactor, they used a lot of that like rusty metal texture, and it really tied the map together really yeah. well. I got cheap with a little bit of it. What I, what I did with quite a few of them is that I looked up other games, and I'm like, I'll make something like this. And what, usually, what I did because making something because I I only used Windows Paint pretty much, but mm -hmm. I copied and pasted some some like 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 a small strip of an image or whatever and I just sort of edited it made it look you know more doomy or more yeah uh, extra light in a way uh, some of the textures are just are uh, just sort of barely edited I don't, I don't know I, I don't think I could have done a better job honestly but that's alright uh, but you edited quite a, a couple of them I noticed and I think they made it look better yeah I did some recolors of them because I, I, I wanted to have like more green stuff so I, I um so like I had a, I, I turned I tried to turn a couple of them into like more uh, colorful type stuff to yeah. make it. I, I kind of like I wanted to I wanted Doom has a lot of like really brown and gray textures and stuff like that. So I wanted to make something that had uh, that made use of like Doom's other colors in the palette. So I had some you know, yellows and oranges and greens and stuff like that to make it more kind of retro in a way. Yeah, I really like that when there's like more colors. I really don't like seeing like a wad. That just sort of uses two colors. Granted, that's kind of with a lot of my levels, but that's usually... I mean, I guess for things like that, it's kind of on purpose, but I do... 
enjoy seeing a lot of different colors or different colors in different areas of the, of the level, as long as it's not the same two colors yeah. over and over, which I am obviously guilty of, but you know. Yeah. Well, I do. I mean, I do that too. That's, that's kind of when I, I started mutiny and part of it was like, I wanted it to be like almost like the opposite of UAC ultra because UAC ultra is all Brown. And that was like, yeah. that was like the entire like premise behind the project. Cause I, I got the idea, um, around the time, I think it was like early, uh, like late two thousands, but like not into like 2010 yet. Um, but there were some mappers that like used a lot of quake textures and stuff and they were like pretty well-known mappers. And I remember people complaining that the only reason their maps are good is because they're using brown, like those quake, those brown quake textures. And I, th I, yeah. I thought that was kind of strange. So I did an experiment where I, I uh, found like a bunch of di different textures and I recolored them all to brown. And I wanted to see, like, even without doing that much, to see if I could make, like, a pretty cool-looking project using just brown yeah. textures. And it works. <laughs> I, made, I made UAC Ultra, and, like, there was a lot of, like, it has a very distinctive, like, rusty metal kind of style. And it's it's almost all brown. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, UAC Ultra is, like, one of the biggest inspirations of my uh, level designing. But I really? guess I would usually pull, like, like a sort of look from various different things and I just find a way to incorporate them. I think you can definitely tell a level that I made because of just sort of, I always kind of use the same setup in a way, like how I put lamps and the lighting and uh, I have a very 90 degree angle type of designing Yeah. Uh, that you could like tell. So <laughs> I don't know. I just, yeah, UAC Ultra was was I think probably the most inspirational uh, one for me at the time when it when it came to level designing before I really started you know sort of dissecting other things. That's pretty cool. I'm, that's that's uh that's nice to hear <laughs> that, that I was at, that I was able to like influence your mapping style. But um yeah, well it's cool. It's cool like getting ideas from other people's maps. That's I mean I get a lot of my ideas from other people's maps too. Just um I, like I'll, I'll see somebody's map that maybe they tried something that seemed like a cool idea, but they didn't do it very well. And like, I'm like, Oh, maybe I can probably, I can probably do this better. Cause this is how I would do it. And then I would, that's, I feel like that kind of carries the entire community. I think a lot of people always try to, um, like kind of copy each other's styles and, um, well, they, yeah. and put their own spin on it. Yeah. Well, with, well, with me, what I always try to do is, uh, I always try to like imitate quake. <laughs> yeah. Cause, uh, I, I really like level designing in Quake, and I always try to find a way to put that into Doom. I used to do that with, I used to try to picture, you know, an Unreal Tournament level and then try to put it into Doom, but that didn't really work very well. But, and then when I started really getting into Quake, you know, because it was older and, well, pretty much the same guys made it. Yeah. It, it, it worked a lot better with style, with my style, so. That's cool. You know, you, um... You posted a thread like kind of a while ago, and it, it's a really interesting topic because I've I feel like I've been on Doom World long enough to have pretty much heard everything about Doom mapping. But you brought up a really interesting point uh, when you asked the question: uh, Do does like a, a mapper's emotional state influence the kind yeah. of maps they make? And that's a pretty that's a pretty interesting yeah. question because as like there's a lot of different art mediums and stuff where where like whether it's like poetry or writing or music. The, the emotional state of the artists can really like kind of change how they how they do things and uh, like look if you look at like Edgar Allan Poe for example like he he's had like a really depressing life and like Vincent Van Gogh cut his own ear off and all kinds of crazy yeah. stuff and those are all like really important artists and that somehow that maybe have influenced their style that was a really interesting question yeah. I think what what I was what was going on in my head is that I realized um, kind of i was just i was just kind of contrasting how because i mean video games is entertainment of course just yeah. like music or i guess to a lesser extent paintings or you know yeah painting yeah, they can be by yourself but i mean looking at it but i just i was just trying to contrast how how they just sort of work together since 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 they're all really familiar because they're always made by a person or the same person and you know it's always their input going into it and I was sort of wondering um, if that actually affects anyone with their levels because you know you're, you're trying to use your creative input and um, 
Yeah, um, it, I, I try to pull out whatever just comes out of my head. Like I try to think of imagery or like like how uh, like how do I want this level to feel? Like do I want the player to be this ultimate badass when playing it? Do I want him to feel want him or her to feel um, overwhelmed, depressed, anything like or not depressed, but you know? Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, like this. But I, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking of the way that I sort of do things. I mean. I even said on the post, I'm not an emotional person in any sense, but yeah. uh, I, I, I just do get sort of inspiration from like that. And the same goes for the music that I make. I always try to make something that that has like a, a feeling to it, even if I'm not feeling that at the same time. Just, just, just a way to make the listener feel something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. I, I know when I was working on UAC Ultra, I was... Uh, it's kind of it's kind of weird to think about because um, I I had a very strong creative drive at that time, and I don't really feel it as much anymore. But I'm also like in a par- I'm I'm also like in a very steady point in my life too. I like I have I have yeah. my own house and I have a career and I have um, I'm, I'm married and like every, and I have a pretty steady job, and um, I'm not really I'm not really worried about anything. I have everything pretty worked out. I have like things that used to be a concern for me for uh, in the past aren't really as much anymore. But at the same time, yeah. I don't really, um, I don't really have as much of a creative drive as I did at the time, and it made me, and it makes me, it makes me wonder because I, at the time, I was, I was a very angry person because <laughs> I was, I was working in customer service, which makes you hate people, and um, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, and um, I, I wasn't really sure what I was doing with my life. I was like, go, I was going to college, but I didn't know what I was going for. I didn't really have a major. I was going for like liberal arts or something which like doesn't really mean anything and um (laughs) i didn't really know what i was doing with my life and i kind of felt almost trapped and i wonder if that like kind of influenced my style too because i I wanted to um i'm not really sure it's it it's hard to like pinpoint what it could be because i one one example is like you could play a lot of doom maps and and almost every megawide there's like one like jailbreak map and it's yeah. like, and it's like, if you, if you, I wonder if that's like, I wonder if that's a tell. Like maybe somebody, pe- maybe fe- people feel like they're in a prison, and then they make a map that's like a prison, and that's that's where yeah. they got the idea from, just from an emotional state. Maybe they're just doing it subconsciously. They don't really know for sure. But um, yeah. But I, I think about this kind of stuff a lot. I think about like what people are probably thinking about when they're making their maps, and um, I never really thought to look into like people's like emotional state or like their psychological condition or any kind of stuff like that. And uh, I wonder if that, that that probably is like something that does influence people's maps. I think I, yeah, yeah. So I think it's it does affect some people, maybe not all of them, because you know your creativity has to come from something, but can't always be like the same source. I guess if you. I don't know. I guess if you like try to make, if you're like feeling this one emotion and you keep making maps, it's always going to make you make the same thing. So I think people will try to avoid that if they want to make um, different, more unique kind of maps. Yeah. I just make whatever I feel like making. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do too. But um, yeah, I mean, and, and it's hard to speak for other people too. Like the, to, <laughs> like oh, you you made this because you're feeling this way. So how are you doing? <laughs> like you yeah. don't want to like ask like weird <laughs> yeah. questions like that because of the map you played and um and uh there's i mean like for example there was the the, um the kids that were in uh like the columbine school shooting they they made maps too but like you can't really play their maps and like see that they were crazy i mean there's really there's really nothing that i mean for the most part i mean i played i played on accident hear me i want to say this on accident uh the uh, one of the, the was it UAC Lab by Eric Harris? I yeah. had no idea it was from him until after I finished the level set. But I noticed the message, uh, something, something, blah, blah, blah. And then it ended with, like, kill them all. And yeah. And there's, like, I think there's a new gore sound. There's a new jibbing animation, sort of. It was kind of edited. And I'm like, I didn't think anything of it. And then eventually I read about who the author was. I'm like, Eric Harris. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did I just play? Yeah. <laughs> It's it's really chilling when you when you find out like what the story is behind it, but like you wouldn't really think of it until like after the fact. I mean, I because yeah. I mean, there's a lot of I mean, there's all sorts of like extra gore mods and like there's I mean, Sergeant Mark V makes brutal doom, but he's not out there killing people. So like, it's, from our, our knowledge, yeah, as long as yeah, as much as we know, <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't know what's going on over there. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we, re- we really don't know, but it's, it is, like, really weird when you find out, like, what they've done afterwards and then look at their yeah. maps. That's that's kind of frightening. But, um, yeah, I don't know what you can really tell, like, from playing people's maps ahead of time. And then, like, yeah. I don't know. It's But, yeah, it, it, it's, a really, it's a really interesting question. It's, um, I mean, it, I guess that, that would mostly affect the maps that I make that are, that are more original. If I try to make something like... like like in Dune 2 Redux, for example, where you're supposed to make a certain map based off in that in that one, it was based off the original level. But say if I was, it was a community project that you know it would have to have this and this and blah blah blah. Uh, I just try to think of something that I guess would fit. But if I was say, making something more original, like just whatever I wanted to make, just for the hell of it, I guess it would be more more reflective of that. Yeah. Do you do you find that like music really carries your um your creativity when you're making a map? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I I don't I don't think it, it. For a little while, I always thought if I listened to a certain thing, it would make my map worse, <laughs> or if I listened to a certain thing, it would make them better. But I always have to. This is just just this is just doing anything. This is pretty much just living. Um, I always have to listen to music. I can't I can't really listen or do anything in silence yeah i always have to have like music in the background or or uh not even just music but just maybe i'll pull up something on youtube and i'll listen to it like i don't know john tron or whatever or more recently uh uh the show called uh world extermination radio oh what's that and i'll just, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> i'll just map while i'm uh while i'm doing that or doing school work or pretending to do school work or anything like that but yeah i, I was like need this ambience it's kind of like a drug in a way yeah because almost. i'm always yeah. always having to listen to it and if i'm not listening to it people get mad at me because i'm always humming a bass line to something or i'm drumming something with my <laughs> yeah i um that yeah. was that was actually one of the main reasons i wanted to start uh this show because when i when when doom radio first came out when uh alfonso and tarnsman were doing it um, I found it to be very, like really therapeutic to listen to while I was mapping. It was it was interesting yeah. to like listen to them discuss mapping ideas and stuff while I was in the process of working on a map. And um, they they weren't making episodes fast enough. That's that's the, <laughs> that's the, uh, the gist <laughs> of it. So I wanted to like make episodes as often as possible, and um, and like get some new stuff to for people to listen to while they're they're mapping. And uh, so I like to talk about doing mapping on this show and stuff like that, and talk about. Just uh, like gameplay design and like map ideas and all kinds of crazy stuff and just give people st- stuff yeah. to listen to because what I, what I find is if I'm if I'm not listening to anything, then I'm listening to my own thoughts tell me that I suck, and that's and yeah. that's that's like a problem that I have to deal with when I'm mapping is if I'm if I'm not listening to anything, then I'm just listening to my own thoughts which are usually just telling me that my this map idea sucks and this isn't going to work out and all kinds of like really negative stuff, and I I think that's yeah. a problem. I've I've heard that that's a problem for most people with creative, uh, like creative uh, abilities. It's just they yeah, kind of have well, to deal with, me with this. Is I don't I don't ever have like that thought like oh this map sucks. Well, sometimes I do, but whenever I start like making, I don't I don't always get like uh, I don't know I don't get like that kind of negative thought. With me, it's just like this doesn't look good enough or or. Uh, I gotta change this or whatever. I I really don't know how to explain it, but yeah. Uh, usually it's that I get create uh, I get frustrated creatively because I just run out of ideas completely, and I'm like, well, I don't know what to do here other than make you know a bunch of rectangles and squares, <laughs> and I just do that, and then that that's pretty much it. But um, also whenever I get, I think this is just with mapping. I don't know, but whenever I'm mapping and like there's no music like i don't know the last time i actually did that that was probably two years ago but the last time i started, i was mapping and there was like nothing going on there's just, just silence in my room i i would get frustrated really easily because i don't know because mapping just for me takes quite a while to 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 do yeah to finish and something. if i have like no ambience or anything going on i get i, I just get really bored and i'm like well I, I, I guess maybe I get I get um, 
Yeah, when well, I say this. when I listen to, like, music and stuff, sometimes that, like, generates images in my head. Like, it kind of gives me, like... Like, there, there's sometimes yeah. where I listen to, like, a really good album that I've, that I've never heard before. I'm just kind of, like, maybe I'm just, like, browsing through YouTube and I find a cool album from, like, this this metal band or whatever. And, uh, like, just listening to them, like, gives me an idea... It'll give me an idea for a Doom map. And it'll, it'll, like, kind of create, like, kind of a setting that I can imagine in my head. And that kind of influences me when I'm when I'm making... Uh, when I'm using the uh, Doom Builder. Yeah. One of the one of the levels I've been working on for my uh, megawatt project called cursed it's actually the, the the name of the wad actually has a double meaning um it's story related but also because a lot of the levels that i've made like i previously mentioned just get wiped off my computer so i'm cursed <laughs> but uh, i worked on um i know i'm kind of changing the subject here but i worked on a city level it was supposed to be completely open not not completely but it was like open world and you could go to every building inside or almost every building inside it and there's like four or five segments in the city it took me like six months to work on computer got not, well not my computer got white but the file got corrupted and i have to do it all over again oh no but um i have been doing it all over again actually i might upload it to the 2017 or or if we have another mutiny thing because it uses that texture pack but um one of the levels that I made on Cursed had the image or the, the music I had in my head, I didn't even just listen to it, was closer from Nine Inch Nails. And so I imagined a lot the, the entire walls would be made out of flesh and there would be like drills that were going into basically, basically just sort of drilling inside it. And there'd be like pools of blood everywhere. And you're basically like inside this living creature. Ooh. But it's uh it, it's got like all these metal contraptions and things basically kind of making it bleed to death while you're inside it it's um uh i really don't want to say because the third half of the uh there are three chapters in the uh wad and the third half or the third chapter there's the uh uh there's the uh what, what was it the uh auto map names and the uh the intermission stream names were different I can't remember the intermission scream one. Um, mm. No, it was uh, well, Corophilia. That was the intermission scream name. <laughs> um, no, no, that was that was for level after it. But basically, I do. I, I don't know. To a minimal extent, it it uh, it does kind of. What usually what I do is I try to whenever I make a map, I always try to make or I try to add the music. That, that I think fits well with it. Yeah. Um, I think I do a good job of that most of the time, but sometimes I don't. But that, that's always, that's well, one it's, it's thing that I always, I mean, like, it's, stress it's, it's over. It's your map, like, so you I should... have to have this right music. I yeah. even go as far as to edit some midis I find of bands and edit it on my own uh, just a little bit so it sounds the way that I want it to. Oh, cool. And I put it in my map, and sometimes I just take it out and put another one in, but I'm always like that. Did you do that with Doom 2 Redux? Yes, yes. Yeah, pretty happy. Okay. Um, uh, with, uh, okay, so was it Soda Poika made map, was it map 19, and it uses what is currently the, the music for map 30. Trace and I discussed what would be the, the music for the final final boss level. And I gave him a few ideas. And we also, I used, Court Long submitted some of his, and uh, Mikey Arpeggio, I guess that's how you pronounce it, uh, some of their midis. And I used a few of them in uh, levels that didn't have any custom music, which was quite a few of them. Mm. And I always try to get something that fit. But with Soda Poika's map, basically, the, the, the map was really large. Like, it was really, really big. And the the song I had, or the track that I put in it was like this sort of power metal kind of thing that lasted about five minutes for a map that lasted about 12. Mm. So instead what I did is I moved that track to map 30, because the Ozzy Osbourne one I didn't think worked, worked that well, even though the name was ironic. <laughs> and I put in something kind of, kind of softer. I put in what the trick is, no, it was... Uh, uh, you look so fine by garbage. It was kind of a slow ambient kind of thing, a kind of depressing sounding, but I put it in and I think that worked better. I did that with a, also a couple 
tracks. Usually what I do is before I put the music in a level is I'll, I'll, I'll just, because I have subfolders upon subfolders of MIDIs. Mm. And I'll just listen to them one by one. And I'm thinking, mm, this one would go good with this map or this one probably doesn't probably doesn't sound as good compared to this and that that's kind of what I what I'll do with the with the level. Hmm. And if there's anything I notice that seems out of place or bad in my opinion like say a midi will have I don't know like a trumpet vocal section which is supposed to be where you can hear the singer but it's like just this instrument and sounds terrible or even if it doesn't sound terrible it just isn't ambient enough I'll yeah. take it out. Uh some midis have, you know, a kind of gap between the intro or their when it starts in the very beginning yeah, of the yeah, I know what you mean. Like song. the song has a start and an end, and it doesn't loop right. Yeah. I've been edited a guitar solo in what map map twenty two of Doom Two Redux. The uh, the uh, bridge guitar solo was edited because I thought it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's cool though, because I noticed that when I was playing it, is it it does sound like um, it did it did sound like the midis came from like there were like many adaptations of like other people's music, but I could tell it had like, it had some, they were tampered with. They didn't sound exactly like the songs. And um, so I thought that was really cool. I thought that was pretty interesting because you, you, you kind of put your own, own, own twist on the, on the map, on, on the music. I mean, and that was really cool. Cause like I, what I did for one of my projects is I, I grabbed some like metal midis of like songs that I liked and I just stuck them in as it is. And uh, it it does it does have like that weird thing where like it there's a beginning and an end to the song and then it just like stops for a few seconds and then it starts yeah. up again and it's like weird it's really like jarring when you hear it. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that in one of Doom Kids maps for I don't remember what the project was. This was a while ago, but I heard it and there's like I don't know two three minutes of silence and I'm like, okay, well this is uh I think that's kind of a pet peeve of mine, which is why I'm always on top of that, but. Uh, <laughs> So this uh this but, project yeah, was... you, this project you're working on is called Cursed, right? Yes. And uh, so you have you been working on this for a while? I've been working on this for two years. The original map set that you were talking about earlier, it was called Ida Wad. Um, that was just the name of it because I couldn't think of anything else. It yeah. was supposed to be that, but I it it just sort of got wiped off, or the levels got wiped off, and so I basically try to remake everything. But this time I kind of made it more. See, the story of the original one was basically. Well, I guess you have to understand the curse itself. So basically, cursed is a gameplay and story-driven focused wad. It isn't about visuals or anything like that. It oh, kind okay. of looks like 95, 1995, 94 wads uh, in the way they're styled, mostly on purpose, also because that's just sort of the way my levels look. But it was supposed to be kind of slower pace, kind of like Quake. You wouldn't have a lot of monsters fighting you. The difficulty came from the lack of resources you had. Like in the earlier levels, you'd mostly use your uh, fists and the pistol. And then you get the chainsaw, or not the chainsaw, the shotgun. Like the second level, for example. Mm. And there'd also be like a, a minimal amount of monsters, or types of monsters that I would use. But basically, I try to, I would try to mix up the gameplay like the uh the three chapters won't have all the same types of monsters in them or the same types of weapons like uh you won't find the plasma rifle the, or the bfg in the first chapter the second one introduces you to the to the super shotgun like from the get go or in the in the first map of the second chapter but you won't find the regular shotgun until about halfway into it and then uh the third one won't have uh, the chainsaw, uh, not chainsaw, sorry, the, the chain gun and chain the gun. shotgun, the, the original, the single barreled shotgun won't be in it. Oh, okay. And I also do that with the monsters as well, but that's, that's mostly to make it, cause I noticed how a lot of wads don't exactly introduce, that's kind of things I've had a problem with, with a few, wa uh, map sets or wads or whatever is how they don't exactly introduce you to, um, monsters or things as you go. Maybe not with weapons, because, you know, the harder a, 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 the level sets get, the more uh, weapons you'll encounter or whatever. Right. But um, they didn't really do that with monsters, and that's what I wanted to do. Like, gradually, you'll be introduced to the monsters. You already know how to fight, but at least you'll be introduced to them in a sort of linear linear fashion. 
Yeah. But also mixing it up a little bit. Hmm. That's an interesting idea. I, I think I think and, there are some wads that like do kind of do something like that where they kind of. Um, they... I think so. Yeah, I, I played a few. I believe I can't really name them though. There's like, but there's, also there's oh, like go ahead, sorry. there's like a hundred fifty thousand wads out there. So there's probably somebody who did it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm... but it's it, it's a cool idea to um to kind of go that approach. But also, what I want to do is the way I separated the chapters out is the first one is basically quake-like levels or tight corridors, very brown, very dark. Uh, they're supposed to be underground, even though you can't see sky every now and then. Mm. And it's basically really slow-paced combat. You don't get a lot of ammo. And then the second chapter is open world. You have to explore everywhere. The uh, depending on what difficulty levels you. You play in different monsters will be in different areas, as with the items and weapons, or most of them. And you just have to go exploring to find anything, even though a lot of them are optional. And then by chapter three, which is basically hell, it's mm, to put it to put it low. It's basically kind of a mind fuck in a way. <laughs> just how the just how the way the levels are designed and how the gameplay works. It's kind of like, well, uh, design-wise, this is kind of like a mixture of one and two. You know, you have tight corridors and kind of slow-ish paced combat, but it's also kind of, it also has a lot of exploration in it as well. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot more traps and a lot more things that'll probably catch you off guard. I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to make it interesting, basically. Yeah. I don't, I don't want, I try to make all the levels in some way, um memorable i don't want the same i don't want a person to play the same uh different levels and think oh these are all the same i, I was kind of going for uh, at least these at least every level has a sort of personality in its own but yeah. staying in in the chapter it belongs to that's a smart way to go about it um i i like i like how imaginative you're being with this too that's very cool um, I put a I put a little too much thought in these kinds of things. Yeah, no, but it's, it's not a bad thing. And I mean, because well, this is what happens as as you get older, your imagination does start to de deteriorate. Things just you you don't have as many ideas, and it's I don't know if that's true for everybody, but I have noticed it with me. I I do I had a lot more ambitious ideas when I first started mapping than I'm than I do today. So I would definitely tap into it as soon as you can, because you, you'll notice the thing is it's kind of fun for me as uh, someone who's been mapping for so many years is I do, I've established like this background and I can look at my old maps and I can, sometimes when I play through my old maps, I can remember the ideas that I had for them. And like, I don't yeah. really get those ideas as naturally anymore. And it's fun to like see those and be like, like kind of be like reminded of what it was like to have like a really vivid imagination. And um, so like, if, if you, if you have the imagination for it now, go for it. Like, cause you, cause if you, if you lose it, you yeah. can't, it's, it's really hard to get it back. Yeah, well, what I remember doing is that I, w I would look back on the older levels I made, specifically when I was 12, because I made like a, a what a six-level map set of those stupid short levels. And I'm looking back, and I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I made really weird scenarios, but at least the ones that I make now that are so weird are actually playable, and you know, you can make sense of things. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's fun to experiment and stuff like that, and that that is one thing. I've I've had conversations, and I know um, Memphis, for example, he's 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 always bringing this. Well, he used to always bring this up, and people always criticize him for it. But he says that like <laughs> maps these days just don't have that kind of like story driven imagination type stuff in them anymore. Like people who are making maps are so used to making maps that they just kind of make the same stuff over and over again just because they know it's good. And he, he blames himself for it, so. too, because he thinks his map, his map design style has become just kind of like this, this caricature of itself. And, um, I guess so. That, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I can really see that. Just, I just play a lot, a lot of wads, just sort of, you know, just coming in without any expectations and just be all like, well, this is a new map set and may or may not be good. I'm not yeah. really exactly mm, not, not, not surprised by anything, I guess, for lack of a better word. It's... I mean, not saying that a, that a lot of them that come out now are bad. I'm just saying yeah. that, you know, I don't have high expectations or really any expectations other than them being good. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the, well, yeah, it's but, true. It, it's not that it, it doesn't have anything to do with the maps being good or bad. But um, there's like there, there's some kind of 
there's some kind of excitement where you kind of get like involved with like the story behind it where you feel connected to the character and like when you feel yeah. like you're like you are somewhere different and um that's that's you don't really get that all the time when you're playing a map by somebody who makes the same style of maps all the time you just feel like you're playing another doom map that's part of the reason why i also wanted to make uh the new character other than the other than because it was story driven but also because you know this was supposed to be you know a different setting in yeah. a way it was supposed to, it was I basically wanted to do, in my mind, I was I was trying to make, or I'm trying to make what people don't do, yeah. basically, in a way, and I didn't want it to be like, um, I don't know, I didn't want this to be like every other kind of thing that gets released, I didn't want it to be hyped, I didn't, or anything like that, in my head, I just wanted to make what I wanted to make, something creative, something, I guess, to a certain extent original. And when it came out, it just sort of came out. People could play it if they wanted to. Because I know that a lot of people probably wouldn't like it because it may be too slow-paced or it's not fast enough or, or uh, I don't know, they just didn't like the gameplay or anything like that. And that, that's that's kind of what I was going for. People would like it or they don't. I didn't I didn't want to create anything that everyone would like. I just wanted to create what you know I want to see, basically. Yeah. Well, what I think you should do as far as... I, I don't know about... Um, making it slow paced because I think people who play it with Doom will expect it to be fast. Um, but well, it would. I go ahead, sorry. Well, what what I'm trying to say is, um, for I I I know from experience I've I've played thousands and thousands of wads, and uh, one thing that I've I've taken note of is that a map that uses very few monsters can actually be very frightening, and um, yeah, it's it's kind of like you, you're not sure. Like, I, there, there's something to be said about the lack of monsters, like the, the absence of monsters. And I've, I've noticed that when I've played, because um, sometimes I'll play, I have um, the entire id games archive saves on my on my hard drive. And um, I'll like, occasionally just pick a random wad and play it. And it doesn't matter what year it's from. But sometimes there'll be a deathmatch map that's accidentally put in the single player file. And I'll play the map. And... I won't look. I won't look at the auto map. I'll just assume that there's it's a single player map, and I'll go through it. And I'm running around, and I can't find any monsters. And I'm like, something's gonna happen. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna pick up this gun, and there's just gonna be arc files everywhere or something. Something crazy's gonna happen. I don't know what to expect, and it's kind of frightening. It kind of gets in, under your skin, and then like by the yeah. time you get like halfway through the level, you're like, oh, th this guy didn't put monsters in this map. It's a stupid deathmatch map. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but um, it it, it it's weird how how you kind of like generates that feeling. It it has nothing to do with how many monsters there are. It's how few of them there are. And uh, if you can kind yeah. of if you're gonna go for like a slow paced style, I think that's what you should do is have like these shocking moments where there's a thousand monsters at once, but also these long stretches of like dead silence. And that's like that'll really yeah, that's, that'll really creep people out. That's that's pretty much what I've been how I've been trying to design my maps. I mean, it's not always like 60, 50 or sixty monsters in one map. Most maps will probably have like a hundred, two hundred, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. But I wanted to pick up the pace as things went on. Like there'd be more types of monsters as they're being introduced, of course, and it'd be more difficult. I was trying to find a way to make it difficult, but balanced at the same time, and. Um, there is something else I was gonna say. I was I completely forgot. Um, but yeah, I was I was trying to find my way to work around that. Basically, making trying to balance it out so that the player yeah. isn't completely bored, but at least they're not doing the same thing over and over again. Trying to basically trying to catch them off guard, especially in the uh, the the later levels where it's more because you know it's hell. It's supposed to be tormenting. Yeah, basically. right. <laughs> yeah, I I know what I you think, mean. But I've, I'm kind of um, design, or I'm kind of designing the last last set to be not necessarily impossible to beat, but just kind of, I don't know, I, purposely frustrating. Yeah. Just, 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 yeah. just kind of do like these dickish moves, and it's that's okay to do because like when there, there's a point where it's like okay, you can do whatever you want. Because I, I was um, there's uh, all the guns in Doom are like really powerful. Like once you start getting pretty deep into it by the time you have the rocket launcher and the super shock and there's really nothing that can stop you so you kind of have yeah. to do like you have you do have to go like pretty crazy at some point but um yeah that's it, it is like you do have to like kind of find that balance of uh making it interesting without kind of like throwing all the monsters at the player at once and i, yeah. I understand that's what you're trying to do is you kind of want to like 
I, I see like you, you're, you're taking this from the approach of like, you're trying to create, you're creating like a, like a kind of standalone game almost, but yeah. using uh, like Doom's resources and stuff. And that's a cool idea. Yeah. I was thinking of, but I knew this was really time consuming and I really didn't want to do it. So I, I was originally planning to retexture if most, if not all of the monsters, like the, the zombies would have hell, uh, the marine helmets. Um, I was, I was thinking of trying to find something to replace the Nazi commander. Keen would be like a mime from blood that you shoot for no reason. And <laughs> I don't know. I I just really wanted a kind of different, give it a more of a different feel. I guess kind of like its own personality. But it, it was really time consuming, and I'm like, you know, it really doesn't need to be changed. So what I'm working with is basically. A re, uh, it's a texture pack of uh, the vanilla vanilla textures just sort of recolored into various different things, and so I use a lot of fake dynamic lighting, but also kind of more, um, I don't know, kind of. I, I always like the vanilla textures. Yeah. But I, there, there isn't. They don't seem to be much to work with whenever I'm trying to be more creative. But I yeah. think because not only the fact that there's so many, so so many recolored textures um just i don't know it's just easier to work with i guess yeah so you, you do these recolors yourself do you edit them your yourself no i th I, I got them from realm 667 oh, okay they were they were much better and of course in total abundance but i also add a few textures of my own usually as a reference because i do a, i i take some cues from the video game blood which i'm a huge fan of i oh okay uh put some uh I, know, I put some references to other games in there. Um, I have a lot of that stupid, uh, not necessarily mappers egotism, but you know where I where I put my initials or my name on a map, and that I <laughs> I do that with a few maps just as an Easter egg, just just for fun. But, yeah. yeah, that's cool. I didn't know you were. Uh, I didn't know you were into blood. That's pretty cool. I love blood. Yeah. I, I, um, I don't know. I'm. I'm a big fan of the first game. The second one, not so much, especially since it has a hard time running on my computer. But <laughs> I really, I really enjoyed the first game, and I think it, it really is a big inspiration in, especially Cursed, but my level design in general, especially the fifth episode, which was Cryptic Passage. That was uh, the expansion pack made by a, a different, a different developer. I can't remember the name. It was like Sunshine something, but um. Yeah, that that one had a more gothic feel, or that episode had a more gothic feel, um, and that 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 kind of inspires a lot of my uh, a lot of the the second the the levels of the second chapter. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, and I, I saw it especially in a uh, Doom Two Redux. You have like a like a kind of an affinity for like that that gothic kind of style. Yeah. I always like that kind of stuff too. I uh, I mean I am a I'm a goth. So <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean to be a goth? Cause I'm I'm like I'm kind of like a metalhead, and I I remember when I was in like middle school and stuff, there were like goth kids, but I don't really know. Uh, a lot of people confuse emo and goth together, and that really ticks me off because there is a difference. Basically, goths it's like a personality thing. It's like goths are basically people that are into the the dark or macabre, anything that's scary or spooky in some way. They don't, they don't always have to dress, you know, dark or whatever, even though that's, that's kind of the fashion design, but goths are basically just in, in basically like the darker side of life, just to put it basically. Yeah. Whereas those on the other hand are just always depressed. So. Mm. When I was, um, when I was in like middle school and stuff, I hung out with the punk kids. I was, uh, like we, we, like, we wore like bondage pants and like that they were like, uh, like plaid patterns and uh, we wore like leather jackets with like studs and stuff sticking out of them we spiked their hair up yeah. and all kinds of stuff that, that's what I was into I, I really I was really into like uh, punk rock when I was younger so I listened to a lot of like the casualties and the global threat GBH yeah. um, I'm actually I was Sex actually Pistols. listening to the cure while I was waiting on you uh, before <laughs> before we started oh, yeah? the conversation I was listening to the cure and uh, I just got into them recently, actually. But yeah, well, when it comes to music, my my I'll listen to pretty much anything that isn't country or rap. Um, I've got a wide taste in music. The, the music I make is gothic industrial in the vein of Nine Inch Nails, Switchblade Symphony, and Marilyn Manson, uh, the earlier 
stuff that they made. But I pretty much like anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm um I'm I'm such a sucker for the uh, the Quake music. Um, I love I love the Quake soundtrack. I actually because I don't have a, a soundtrack for Curse yet. I was supposed to have a composer do it, but he hasn't like contacted me in like two months. And I asked Eris if he could do it, and he's like he probably can't, but he may or may not. So for the time being, I just use a for the, for a placeholder because I don't like listening to the original do music whenever I'm making a new level. I um. I use the Quake soundtrack. <laughs> I use a PK3 file. Yeah. Yeah, the uh the Quake music is just it it's really timeless almost. Like it's it's very um it's just like this weird creepy droning noise that you listen to in the background and it's awesome. I love it. Yeah. It actually fits really well. I can't really say the same about the later levels, but it fits really well with the with the first the first 10 levels of Curse just because of the way they they're designed. I mean, they're explicitly designed to mimic Quake, so I guess that 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 kind of <laughs> that kind of work makes it work. Yeah, I've I'm, I'm I've been getting like a kind of I can I've been on a kick with that lately. That found like some dark ambient music on the uh, yeah. like on YouTube and stuff, and it's just like these these like weird. It's just kind of like these like gentle like whooshing sounds or like a heartbeat sound or just something kind of like I don't know, but it's it's cool. It's just like kind of listening to that noise. It's just really. Um, I don't know. It's it's a it's kind of um, it's creepy in a way, but it's also like it, it's very um, stimulating for the imagination and stuff too. Yeah, that's 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 why I always try to, especially when I'm working on a certain level, I always try to listen to a specific type of music because it always can put you in like a different kind of mindset or. Mood. Yeah, I, I really feel that about music. Yeah. So I do listen to <laughs> a lot of. If anyone has followed or seen most some of my posts on doom world they know i'm a huge nine inch nails fan yeah and Marilyn too to some extent yeah well, that's cool um yeah i'm like i'm more of a metalhead now i listen to like all kinds of different stuff and uh, i was i was telling you earlier i um when i was talking i was talking to splatterhouse and he told me about slam metal which is just like this ridiculous <laughs> genre of music <laughs> it's just it, yeah it's just like it, it's like this weird steady um it's, it's not very it's it's very um it's almost tiring to listen to because it doesn't it doesn't have any like <laughs> it doesn't have any like interesting solos or anything and it doesn't sound like very charged it's just like i don't there's no it doesn't even seem like there's even any emotion behind it and it's hard to believe that they don't just do it ironically but it's I just would, uh, I, I would just listen to it for the guy's voice i think that's just fabulous yeah cause, yeah because the black guy's voice is just like Ooh. And that's like the the entire. I'm not even joking. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's just like belching, like this weird, like frog croaking noise into the into the microphone. And I was like, Yeah, <laughs> like someone just like made a I weird sound the with ones, their voice. And then they're like, like I'll the make a band about this. The guy's voice is more, um, kind of like computer sound. Like it sounds like something yeah. like that. <laughs> my my friend Austin, he listens to a lot of weird types of metal. He's into um, well. My circle of gaming friends are always into a type of a different type of metal. Um, Austin, like my friend Austin, likes to listen to. Uh, shit, how did I forget the name? Power metal. And Power metal. He okay. Listens to Russian metal because he's into Russian stuff for some reason. I don't know what my friend Luke likes to listen to. I think he's he's a kind of a weeb. We're all kind of neckbeards, even though I have no <laughs> beard whatsoever. In fact, I obviously have no hair on me except on my head, but I'm a neckbeard somehow. Um. Uh. Yeah. We, we we all the only the only big band we all listen to is Slayer. So, but um, yeah. he he just listens to this weird shit. Like I don't think there's even an actual uh actual genre to it. Maybe it's just it's bizarre. But yeah. I think that's kind of what makes it fun. Yeah. Well, there's there was like this one uh, genre of music I found out about, which is like um. It's like <laughs> they're like I think the the uh the members of the band are like pretending to be like dwarves or like elves or something. <laughs> and it's like they're like I think there's like there's this one band called like Fin Troll, for example, and they're like they, they dress up like I saw a, a music video for them once and it's like it's like power metal, but they oh. also have like these like flutes and stuff in the background. And uh they dress up like they're in Game of Thrones. It's like <laughs> it's like it's really wild. I don't know. 
Uh, it, have you uh, have you heard of Max Sabbath? Max Sabbath? No, what's that? Yes. Max Sabbath is a uh, what do they call it? a tribute band to Black Sabbath, except yeah. uh, the uh, band members dress up as the cartoons from the McDonald's thing. I don't know if you, you know, <laughs> the character from McDonald's thing, and the lead singer is like an evil Ronald McDonald, and they oh basically they sing Black Sabbath. Uh, songs, but they always make it food related somehow. <laughs> and Demon, of course, but you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. There's a. Uh, I saw, someone on Facebook told me about this um, band called Ned. Uh, I, I don't know if it's, that's what it's called, but it's, they're, uh, they're Ned. Everybody in the band dresses up like Ned Flanders, and like all their songs <laughs> are like Oakley Doakley Doodly Do, like all kinds of like crazy shit. <laughs> it's that's so great. funny. It's, it's so uh, funny I, that people I, like can be like. Even though they're like musically talented, they still have like a crazy sense of humor to do something and like put like go one hundred percent with that crazy idea. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's this also. Uh, I don't know. I find a lot of these just watching videos on YouTube. There's a, a, a what like a, a a Finnish or Danish band, a metal band called Winnie Pooh, like Winnie the Pooh, but sort of missing letters or change <laughs> letters, and they basically have like I don't know long almost fur looking hair glued on their face and i don't know if it's just one thing it was just one show live or do they do this all the time but they basically have all the members strapped on uh strapped on like this uh this this moving thing on the ceiling and they're kind of strapped on to it but they're but they're held on by like bungee cords so that they're <laughs> sort of floating in midair while they're playing their instruments including the drummer and uh, the... the the singer screams weird. It, it's really bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the, drummer, know, I, I the drummer, the drummer suspended in the air too. Is something that's more serious, I guess. Yeah. I yeah. I, I really don't like listening to music with sort of a, a very uh, basic, not necessarily lyrical, lyrical message. I don't know how to say it, but I'm trying to. I try to listen to something more meaningful, basically. Yeah. Even though I do enjoy listening to, I don't know, Ariana Grande, for example. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's it. There's um. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to take these people seriously, but it's 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 hilarious that it exists, that it's like actually a thing. Yeah. And um. I still want to make that. I still want to make my band Yardbird and the Featherheads. Just just make an album all about you know being in an elderly home. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, funny. my dad always told me that if he was in the metal band he would call it death row skull death row skull yes <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, you said um you uh i know you posted like one time there was like a thread about like where you live you said you live like near the bible belt what is that Did, i always thought like the bible belt meant um something to do with like people always vote conservative, conservative, so they always vote for like the the Republican Party. And, that's uh, that's is that basically what it means? Yeah, that's pretty much true. It's basically like this. It's basically just the South, Southern United States, um, where where there's like churches in every street in every town. Like I'm I dead freaking serious. My the town that I live in. Granted, I live in two. I used to live in three different houses, but I live in two places and one of them which is a small town has three churches on this one street wow and then if you go if you like i don't know take if you just three churches on one street but if you go to a street parallel to it on either the left or right there'll be another church but basically the bible belt is just sort of the south where everyone's mostly conservative christians so yeah is that annoying for you? Because like, because you're like gothic. Do people like bother you all the time about that? Um. Well, I'm technically, uh, in a way, I'm technically a closet goth because I don't ever really go out wearing anything except just black. I mean, I don't really wear the eyeliner or the lipstick all that much. Oh, okay. Maybe nail polish. But uh, yeah, it, it can be annoying. It can be, especially the older people. It, it can be really annoying. Yeah. So do you do you have to like deal with people that are like telling you to do things because do things because like god told you and stuff like that i mean i, I when i grew up when i was I, I had i lived in like a christian household too my uh my mom and dad were like pretty well i don't i don't know well i shouldn't really say but um my both my parents were like 
uh, were like pretty big into Christians and I had to go to church every Sunday and stuff like that. And, um, yeah. I, I got kind of lucky are. because like once I moved out of my house and I, I didn't have to do that anymore, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was, like, um, I really don't have to, I just, I just, I just have to, I just have to sort of hear it. I mean, I really don't have to put up with people personally, but I will, I will every now and then hear basically sort of religious propaganda. Like there's this one guy who likes to come to the store. He thinks he's a Buffalo soldier, basically. He wears uh, like a union, a union cowboy hat and he dresses <laughs> kind of old timey in a way and he has like the 60s this car that's from the 60s and he's always talking about oh well if y'all want to go to heaven y'all gotta love each other blah 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 and i'm just rolling my eyes because you can't really do anything about it so yeah i just, just gotta let it even though usually a lot of them are talking crap <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah pretty much every here is about arm to the teeth so oh yeah yeah especially um yeah when i i um i don't really I don't have a problem with religion or anything. I know like people like that. I know a lot of people who are Christians and I understand that. And it's, and in fact, in fact, for a lot of people who are like really deep into Christians, I'm almost like impressed because like they put so much faith into it but af- against like all this, like all this like evidence and all this like adversity of people that are like, like, you know, like, con- like scientists that are like constantly like doing things to prove religion wrong or whatever. And, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I saw a picture on the internet a while ago, which is basically um, this uh, this uh, Muslim woman in the desert holding an AK-47 and the Koran, and she's got whatever they're called on the the, the thing to cover up their face. I'm sorry, I can't yeah. remember the name. I don't even remember what it's called, but I know what you mean. A blonde girl holding an AR-15 and a Bible in her hand, and she's behind a Confederate flag, and she's wearing camouflage. And it says, "What's the difference?" And that's that's pretty much true. Yeah, it, it really does sum it up. It's it, it's weird that people get so like charged up about it that they'll kill people about it. That's what's that's when it, that's yeah. when it gets like way too far. But um, yeah. I I do I, I do appreciate people who like who do consider themselves to be religious because I mean there's if, if your religion's not hurting anybody, it's no problem. But for me, when I grew up, um, I I my parents were very like they were very cool about it. Like they were, I mean they were. They they do they did make me like go to church every Sunday like when I was when I was really young, but um, what I really couldn't stand the most about it was well the the act of going to church was that every <laughs> time I went there, um, within like ten minutes you would start hearing a baby cry because everybody would bring because <laughs> everybody brings their babies and babies hate church it's just boring for them, <laughs> and it I would yeah. it got to a point where I was like actually like almost like got a stopwatch and just measured the amount of time it would take. And it was always it was always within ten minutes you would start hearing a baby cry every single time I went, yeah. and it was just I don't, oh it was so, it was so awful. Yeah, thankfully I don't I don't my parents don't make us go to church anymore. But um, yeah, when I was little, whenever I went to the Lutheran church, uh, which we used to go to, um, I was always quiet. My my mother always made sure that I wasn't doing anything annoying. I'd always have to sit next to my parents or them and. Uh, they always had like for kids. They always had like this little coloring book thing. And I remember one time. <laughs> I remember one time because there was like this little pencil cartoon of Jesus wearing yeah. a robe. And my overly active brain, mixed with video games, made me color him as a ninja <laughs> <laughs> with, with daggers and, and throwing stars on him. And I made all his disciples ninjas. I drew that on them. I'm sure a couple times I probably drew guns on them and never showed them <laughs> to anyone. That's but, hilarious. Um, what I like, um, my my parent. Well, when I say my parents now, I mean my mother and my uh, stepfather. They they sort of attend the the Baptist church in our town. And what I really like about them is that they don't tell you what to do. They're always they always trying to drive home the point that it's it's supposed to be what you believe in. It's like supposed to be a personal connection, not what you're told to do yes. or told to be by anyone, regardless of what religion they are. It's supposed to be like a personal belief. And yeah, yes, they are Christians, but they always, they always try to make it clear that it's supposed to be what you believe in. And I, I, I can appreciate that since they're not, you know, always you have to believe this and that, even though a lot of the elderly people are like that, but whatever. Yeah. That's where it gets squirrely is when like people are like, 
telling you how to how, like what you're supposed to do because that's what the bible says and that's what god's will is yeah. and all kinds of and like they're making you like they they just like they they frown upon you and it's like you can't even be friends with these people because you make certain decisions or you choose to act a certain way or not do something yeah. that you're supposed to do or whatever and it's a uh, thankful it's weird when it like it, it it conflicts with the relationships you have with people <laughs> yeah thankfully a lot of the Christians that I know, especially in that church, are more open-minded about, well, just things in general. They're not always such close-minded bigots, but I know a few of those, too. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, no one would be too happy that I actually kind of agree with uh, Levain Satanism, sort of the philosophies. I don't follow the church of Satanism, or Levain Satanism, that is. They're atheistic. They don't believe in God or Satan. They see Satan as a, um, basically a representation of not not necessarily human desires, just sort of humanity. Mm. But they got a few philosophies. They have their own sins and rules and things like that. And I can I can kind of get behind that. I just I just don't want to be part of any church for anything. I just sort of want to believe in what I want to believe in. Yeah. And of course, I believe in Doom Guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta believe in Doom Guy. Yeah, he's he's my hero. I. I always told some of my I always told my friends that God enjoys God's favorite genre of music is heavy metal, while Satan likes listening to smooth jazz and blues. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, yeah, you gotta live and die by Doom Guy. I I do yeah. I do everything Doom Guy tells me to do, or rather he uh, or rather he does funny. everything I tell him to do. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can't tell anyone to do anything because you know he's mute. Yeah, he's a cool guy. He he keeps his mouth shut. He doesn't do anything. He just you know he lets yeah. you do. He he just lets you be just, you. <laughs> he just makes just makes this annoying scream when he dies. Yeah. yeah. I, I never liked the death scream. I always found it really annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's really like it's it's a, uh, it's like raspy and like ah. Yeah. Really weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on the topic of music, I actually live. Or live. I have a very diverse musical family. It's it's almost laughable. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll listen to pretty much anything. My favorites are gothic, industrial, metal, and rock, of course, which is the type of music that I make. My dad listens to J metal, which is basically just J pop mixed with metal. He's into huh. he's in Japanese shit. He's kind of a weeboo. Um. <laughs> and uh, um. <laughs> uh, he he does listen to jazz. He actually used to listen to electronica type stuff, and that's that's what got me into listening to that. Uh, my mom listens to like seventies music, seventies and eighties pop music. My step listens to my stepdad. I mean, listens to uh, blues, and then my sister uh, she listens to what the kids are into these days, uh, yeah. as in like emo core rap. That, not not rap. I'm sorry, metal, rock and metal, that kind of crap. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. My my wife's the same way. She'll um, like she she listens to whatever's on the radio. And I've I've like tried to have these conversations with her about music because like I've, I'll I'll find like a really cool genre of music and I think she would be into it and I would bring it up to her and she's like, what is this crap? I don't want to listen to this. She just wants to listen to whatever whatever's on the radio. Whatever's on the radio is good. Like I don't know. It's just something about music is not that deep to her or something. But I don't know. I um yes, but I, I can get like, car- I can get carried away. I'll find out about one genre and I'll find out every band that's part of that genre and I'm like yeah. I'll just get like really I, sucked into I'm a, it. I'm quite the music nerd. I was like I was like I don't know why. I was like finding trivial details about bands, albums and things like that. Yeah. I can name every I can name about every composer for about every song. You know Marilyn Manson album and all the members that they had live or actual. <laughs> I know all the a lot of facts about Nine Inch Nails. Just stupid things like that. I waste my time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pretty well, much. but yeah, it's but the thing about music is that there's there's so much of it out there. There's like no there's there's like no shortage of music out there. There's all kinds of different genres and subgenres and stuff. And it's, you can yeah. if, if you take the time, you can really fo- like hone in on that exact kind of sound you want. If you if you really take yeah. the time to look for it, and that's what's so cool about it, and that's why it drives me crazy when my wife is like, like only listening to like 
whatever garbage is on the radio because it's just the popular crap yeah. that everybody's like i don't know why she's into it but yeah i, don't know, I really silly. don't like the only thing that would make me like a certain pop group or artist or whatever is if i think they make at least listenable music i really don't like a lot of the current ones because it's really the same thing over and over and it's really slow and it's got really no message whatsoever yeah i can get into some like Mm, I know a lot of people will hate me for saying this. I can get into someone like Grande because even though I don't really listen to her stuff, I can enjoy it sometimes just because it's got more of an electric beat, electronic yeah. kind of sound to it. And, you know, her voice is good. So, and I can, once in a while, you just got to stop caring about what people are singing about. <laughs> yeah. And it also helps that she's really pretty. But, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, she has like a, I, I've noticed like in some of her songs, she has like a cool, like, elect, like, um, their their songs are kind of diverse. Like they have like a different like instrument set for most of the different songs. Yeah, that's another. I also I think she sounds much better whenever there's not a featured artist because of course yeah. a featured artist nine times out of ten is gonna suck. But <laughs> you know I think she sounds okay. I mean and I listen to not necessarily pop groups. I can't really name any other pop thing. Honestly, I can't, I can't either. But I know them when I hear them. Yeah, <laughs> like you just you just know that sound. It's just like uh, it's what what really drove me crazy is like there was a point where um, uh, a lot of bands or not not they're not even bands they're just artists if you can call them <laughs> that. Um, but there's there's so many songs about like drinking alcohol and partying and all kinds of stuff, and it's just like it's I'm, it's such a tired premise to me. Uh, I'm so tired that's of listening one of to that. The most annoying things about living in the Bible Belt that's what's on the radio on like every store ever. Yeah, man, we're gonna, we're gonna go but to the what, bar. We're I, gonna get fucked up, and we're gonna party and la- yeah, get like who cares, man? Yeah. I'm so tired. Like, like the same song over it's like, and over. It, I, I don't even. It's funny because my name's Forty Ounce, and like those songs turn me off of alcohol. Like I'm not even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, what was I gonna say? I, I don't know. I kind of like listening to like how a band or a group starts, starts out like their dynamic. Like if you listen to any of Manson's albums. And then listen to their very first album, Portrait of the American Family, or even back when they were called the Spooky Kids, they made really different types of music. It was more cartoonish, it was more fun, more punk, um, mostly because the uh, the founder of, yes, Marilyn Manson was co-founded by a guy called Daisy Berkowitz, so that was his stage name. He made, his style of music was kind of like this this sort of dark um, it, it's like this dark, almost surfer metal kind of sounding things. It was really, it, it had that weird dynamic to it. It had like a mix of genre, genres in a way. Yeah. It, it was really interesting. And if you listen to his newest or anything after that, it's, it, it, you can really tell the difference, especially in just also listening to his voice. But also I, I discovered that Maroon 5, which is pretty much just some pop band. Yeah. For, 20 to 30 year old women um <laughs> they back when they were all in high school they were called kara's flowers and they were actually 90s pop rock grunge and it was actually pretty good yeah the problem the, the reason why they stopped doing that is because it was pretty much a commercial failure yeah <laughs> that's what happens like i um i when i first found out about nirvana um they were like they, i mean they were cool but I listened to like one of their like really or, like their first album, Bleach, and it's like a really like heavy like almost metal kind of kind of sound to it. And I was like, "Whoa, this is really cool! I can really get behind this." And I don't have yeah. a problem with Nirvana anyway. Like their Nirvana's pretty cool otherwise, but um, their their first album was like way different than what they what they eventually started doing after that. And uh, it, yeah. it's weird when like bands like especially like stuff that like you hear like on the radio. If you, I can almost feel. Like the artists that are on the radio, they're they're so produced that they're not actually creating something that they want to create. They're like being yeah. told what to do by their agent, and uh, much, yeah, and it's it's it sucks because you you can almost feel that there's like not that like kind of like actual uh, like creative drive behind it. Yeah, it sucks when that happens. But yeah, I guess I mean you know a band or artist kind of has to evolve their sound. Eve, that it may be worse, it might be better. Yeah. It might be better for them, not not for the fans. But yeah, I, 
guess that just sort of happens. I mean, some people sort of do it deliberately, like Nine Inch Nails, for example. All their albums are kind of different in some way, especially in the sound. And as you progress from the first album to like the next, you can hear Reznor's voice getting deeper and more mature and kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading the comments, and it's just really. You're reading about the chat. Yeah, yeah, the re- I'm reading the chat on on Twitch, and I think my friends have uh, have invaded the space. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get carried away with that. I I, I try not yeah. to pay attention to the chat. It like distracts me from my conversation, and then it ends up making a sucky show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Don't listen to them. They're just being they're just being noisy. But um, but yeah, it's the, the way that like um that like some bands will get like um they'll get like kind of like overproduced, and like they'll kind of like almost lose their style that they originally had that's one of the things yeah. that like really attracts me to do is because like you know that you're getting something from one person and you're getting exactly what that person wanted to make because nobody's there's no other influences involved like there's no they're not being paid to do it they're not um they're not they just kind of have they're, they're just doing what they want to do and they're doing it out of their own time and out of their own passions and they're just creating what they want to create so when you're playing a doom map you know you're getting exactly what that person wanted to make at least at least what their ability to create is and yeah. um so like that that's that's i guess that's like one of the reasons why i don't think i'll ever get bored of doom is because i know that i'm not getting a game that was like if, if you buy a game like there's if they're selling it for a profit they're they're, they're doing something that they know will like carry on their business and uh with with when you're playing a doom map you're not really it's just it's something that somebody wanted to make and there's there's not really any reason behind it other than they wanted to make it so you know you're getting something that's like pure in that way yeah yeah so yeah that makes a lot of sense i mean i I don't know i guess like like with mapping you can kind of get you know lose your uh you uh (laughs) You can um, lose your creativity when you make something, which, you know, I, I guess that's just what happens to everyone. Yeah, it can happen. But, um, yeah, it can happen. But for, for a lot of people, it doesn't. And that's why I like to see people, like, starting new maps. And, uh, like, well, not, not uh, like, new new mappers getting into Doom and starting maps for the first time, because you can kind of, like, um, you just get, you get to see people's creative vision and, like, all people try new things and all kinds of stuff like that. And you don't really have to you don't you don't have to like you don't get bothered with people like following trends and stuff if they're if they're kind of starting out and just doing what they want to do and they have like that kind of like i don't know just kind of that imaginative drive that like kind of motivated to make maps in the first place yeah it's cool i mean i mean like 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 a uh, artist or a, a band after a while, I mean, after doing it for so for so long, I mean, I guess you just kind of you, you get used to it. You just you just do it for the hell of it. Just not, not saying that they you always lose you know your passion for music or mapping or whatever, but it just kind of becomes you know just sort of. Well, uh, it's hard to say. Not, not, yeah, but I guess you just can kind of tell after a while. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I mean, especially in, in the person's attitude. So. Yeah. Right. So, um, is there anything you want to talk about real quick before we like wrap this up? Um, I know we like covered a bunch of stuff, but I don't know if there's like anything you definitely wanted to talk to <laughs> that we didn't like get to cover. Um, mm, nah, I think that's about it. I guess <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll think of something maybe like in another month or so, but <laughs> I, I think I think I'm out of ideas. That always seems to happen. I do, um, like, when I do these shows, like, I'll, like, think of something immediately after it's over. But, um, I, and that even happens with some of the guests I have on the show, too. And they're like, oh, I definitely want to talk about this, but I didn't, like, and I'll even ask them, too. I'll be like, hey, is there anything you want to talk about? And then they'll, like, think about it, like, immediately after we go off the air. They're like, oh, shit, I wanted to say this. <laughs> yeah. But whatever. If, if that's the case, yeah. I mean, you can be on the show again. I really don't, I, I love having people on more than once, and uh, it's, it's cool to be able to keep making shows like this and uh be able to talk about more doom stuff whatever whatever's on our minds hopefully you know gets the show gets a lot more attention i don't know how many people uh i really don't know how much of doom world actually watches it but i hope a lot do i mean i i especially enjoy it i mean i think it's 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 
in my opinion, I think it's fine. Really doesn't not much has to be changed, I think, but I, I guess I can get entertained really easy. I don't know. I don't want I don't want to to make it sound like y'all don't have to or you don't have to do anything to yeah. improve it. But I, I think I think it just works. Yeah, I like it because it's like real. We're not like I don't edit anything. I just kind of it's very it's just our raw conversation exactly how it was. And yeah. uh, I guess that, that kind of sucks for uh, me because you know I always kind of ramble on and mumble and blah 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 so <laughs> well i didn't think so i thought you were a lot of fun to talk to uh, thanks and i'm sure a I've lot of people kind of, enjoy listening i've been to waiting you, so. i've been waiting eagerly for this conversation to be honest i'm like oh my god i can't believe this actually gonna happen yeah <laughs> well I'm, I'm glad you got to be on the show it was a lot of fun and uh i enjoyed talking to you and uh, you too. you're a very interesting person thanks hopefully um uh, <laughs> hopefully i didn't uh so, you know, piss anyone off. <laughs> well, if that's the case, well, they're just gonna have to, they're gonna have to suck it up because it, it's it's okay to have an opinion. You should you should be able to say whatever, because that, that's what we're, that's what yeah. we're here to do. We're here to get our individual perspectives, and we're not here to like speak for everybody. If people don't like what you think, yeah. well, too bad. It's it's not it's what you think. It's not what they think. You know. So. Yeah, I like that about the show because I'm that's pretty much my personality. I don't really have a have a. I have a pretty filterless person. <laughs> yeah, that you, you should be able to be that way. It's it just be yourself, you know. Yeah, it's also great, you know, living where I do is because I guess things can be shocking for the sake of being shocking, and looking at people's reactions at just being you is this quite hilarious. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's weird. <laughs> it sucks, and it's it's funny. Like that when you can just be yourself and then realize that you've just pissed off a thousand people. It's like what the hell? Like why? I'm just. I'm being honest. That's it. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna yeah. like pretend to be somebody that you want me to be. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Although I, I do get the problem where I get misunderstood a lot. Like I say something and people don't really know what I'm trying to say. I guess I don't. I, sometimes I don't project myself very well, or or um I don't know. I say something. I word something wrong and people will get like the wrong idea. That that happens to me all the time. But yeah, um, especially on on the forums <laughs> because like if you're. Well, things get misinterpreted through text all the time, so it's it's nice to be able to do this where we're actually talking, so we can hear each other's tone and know exactly yeah, what we mean when we speak. And uh, I hate texting, even though I text a lot. It just gets annoying. <laughs> yes, I know it's it, it really sucks because like sometimes you'll say something completely completely innocuous, and somebody will like hone in on like one detail and understand and like think that you had like some kind of hidden subtext or some kind of message you're trying to get across or some kind of sarcasm that. That you that was totally yeah. not what you meant at all, and then you have to like argue with yeah. people to like get your point across and just tell them that you're you're just being whatever, it, you're just saying yeah, something. Yeah, I've been and didn't mean through anything. a few of those before, and it also doesn't help that you can make spelling errors or actually read something wrong, like grammatically or whatever, and yeah. that causes problems. I know it's it's having to like speak in like a in like an arbitrary and. Um, like very diplomatic way is something that is a skill I had to develop that took many years on the forums. Yeah. I'm still uh, working on that cuz I've I've had, you know, social anxiety disorder cuz I've I've been a very introverted person which is why I have a lot of time on my hands to do anything. Well, a lot of us uh, are. A well, lot of us who play Doom who are are, are introverted in one way or another cuz like if yeah. we if we're this obsessed with this game, I think we would have to be. Yeah. <laughs> But I like literally don't go out. I'm I have like no upper body strength whatsoever. I have little. I'm I always spend time sitting down and never exercise, and I just eat a pint of ice cream whenever I'm at work. Whenever I'm <laughs> working, I'm just I, I'm not I'm not like I'm not natural. I don't know how do I word this. See example. There you go. I can't word it properly, but I'm not. I don't like actively try to be lazy. I just I just never really have anything to do or. If if I do want to do something, it's going to be inside, and that always and that's always just something to yeah. channel my creativity or frustrations or anything like that. So yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> well, I don't. I, I I've, yeah. I've been going out a lot more lately, but it's it it sucks because I don't have to. I don't get the opportunity to like kind of tap into my creative abilities when I'm doing anything that's like outside or with friends or whatever. I mean, besides just talking with people, but other than that, it's like I don't know if you can consider that. <laughs> and like a creative yeah. exercise is like being able to talk to people but um 
Yeah, I do, I do well, miss it. I like it to nap as often. What I like to do is whenever, because I, I don't ever do anything outside, because unless it's like yard work, because I'm told to do it. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't barely ever hang out with anyone, at least doing an outdoor activity. But whatever I like to do is because my family travels a lot for various reasons. And what I always like to do is I like to try to take pieces of architecture and I try to try to put it, I, I try to imagine that as a doom level in a way. And I think probably what I'm going to do, at least what I'm planning to do after Curse, making Cursed, I'm sorry, is uh, I, I would probably start working on death match levels. I, that's kind of, multiplayer has kind of been a thing that I always wanted to touch on. Mm. So I've always wanted to start trying to do that. I was actually, I completely forgot. I wanted to mention that the way I kind of design some levels just to make them more interesting is to uh, kind of design them like they're an arena. Mm. Like I've made quite a few levels for various projects and I think they'd be pretty good deathmatch levels if they were just edited a little bit and, you yeah. know, item placements were different. But that, that's kind of, kind of always the mindset that I go to with quite a few of them. And I, I think that's where the Unreal Tournament influences come from. And, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I just sort of pull things from a lot of games and, and, uh, Fun fact, I actually, I, I don't know, I just love Unreal Tournament so much. I have the original file that my dad used to play on the Windows 2000. It's been, that that file, or the, the those folders have been through at least four computers, and I still play the same one. I gave, all the bots <laughs> have their own names, they have different voices and whatnot, of course, other than, you know, the vanilla ones. But they always, I think my dad just sort of gave them in a way, their own personality, like how they function, just just for the fun of it. And he used to play that a lot, and now I play that a lot. And I don't know, <laughs> I, I, just, <laughs> I just love that crap so much. Hmm. Well, that's awesome that you're you're, you're thinking about doing deathmatch maps because the uh, the deathmatch community does need someone like that. Yeah, it's, I've, uh, it's kind of lacking in deathmatch these days. Talking, I've been interested in talking to Doom Kid about making deathmatch levels. Maybe we can um, uh, collaborate on some or. Maybe even just play tests in the mind that I make, but that's that's been one thing that I've been interested in. So that's a cool idea. I'm sure he'd be open to it. Hopefully so. I mean, I'd like to take part in a lot more projects in the future. So all right, cool. All right, so um, it was good talking to you, and um, thanks. Good talking to you too. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know who I'm talking to next. I have to. I have like a lot of. I've been talking to a lot of people lately. So a lot of stuff still up in the air. I haven't. I don't have like official schedules yet, but um, hopefully we'll get. You've some... been talking. To... Yeah, you've been talking to people almost daily. It's pretty. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I did one yesterday and the day before. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting. It's it's getting to the point where I can't. I can't. Well, I guess I guess I can, but I just need to put some more of the extra time I have to listen because I I haven't finished season three yet. Yeah, well that's the idea. I'm hoping this kind of like lasts a while, so like I can create like yeah. this whole like background and stuff so like even if you find out about it like 10 years from now you'll have all this content to listen to yeah i I think it will i think it'll last pretty for a long time at least i mean especially as long as the doom community is going there's always going to be you know room to improve and extra things to do and whatnot i think that's really really cool yeah and stuff's always going on there's like there's there's flame wars that happen and new stuff new wads come out and all kinds of interesting debates and all kinds of stuff to bring up so there's there's always there's always gonna be stuff to talk about Okay. Yeah. So uh, thank All you, right. everybody, for listening. Thank you, Space Marines, and thank you, NX Gangrel. And um, thank. If you're if you're interested in being on the show again, I'll I'll keep in touch. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. All right. See you guys. Bye.